With summer only a few weeks away, the most sacred event in all of FGO is nearly upon us, the dreaded swimsuit gotcha. Hello everyone, Soberoni of Gene Day Reviews here, and in today's spotlight we'll be covering the only servant who can make you scream padodu during the summertime, Nero Caster. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize her effectively, and an overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. Now, onto Nero's stats. Caster Nero has a max HP of 13,685 and a max attack of 10,857, which becomes 9,771 due to her class attack modifier. Compared to her fellow casters, Nero packs really subpar HP, but does have the third highest attack stat alongside Ilya. Generally speaking though, Nero's HP is just about average, maybe slightly below for a 5 star, but her attack is very low. Overall, her stats are underwhelming, but with a more offensive spread than your typical caster. Taking a look at her skills, her first skill is Rampage Privilege, rank EX. It increases her NP gauge between 30 and 50%, and also increases her NP gain rate when her HP is less than 50% for 3 turns, between 30 and 50%, both depending on level. Her second skill is 7 crowns rank C, it increases her attack and defense for 3 turns between 20 and 30% depending on level, and it also negates her own class disadvantage for 3 turns. And finally her last skill is undying mages rank A, it applies guts 1 time for 3 turns to an ally and also increases their attack for 3 turns between 30 and 50% depending on level. Moving on to her passives, she has Riding Rank B, which increases her quick card effectiveness by 8%, Territory Creation Rank A+, which increases her arts card effectiveness by 11%, and Item Construction Rank EX, which increases her HP recovery amount by 10%. As for her deck and Noble Phantasm, Caster Nero has an Arts Buster deck with Quick Arts Arts Buster Buster and a Buster Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm Lauda Lentum Domus Illustrious applies Ignore Invincibility for one turn, and it also increases her NP strength for one turn between 20 and 60%, depending on overcharge, and deals heavy damage to all enemies, with a between a 300% and 500% damage modifier, depending on level. Taking a closer look at her cards, we see that her Quick Car hits 4 times, her Arts hits 6 times, her Buster hits twice, and her Extra Attack hits 6 times. She has an NP gain rate of 0.40% and a star rate of 11.10%. She has very strong NP gain due to the 6 hit arts and extra cards, and also some decent star generating as well despite her 1 quick card deck just because of the sheer amount of hits on her cards. Umu, of course I have to start off the summer spotlights with my Empress Nero, but as much as I love her, Nero Caster is a very mixed bag servant. For one thing, her stats are quite bad. Her attack is good for a caster, but that isn't saying much and she lacks the benefit of having high HP like most casters do. She also suffers from one of the worst class modifiers in the game for an offensive servant. But despite that, Nero is still packing heat. Seven Crowns is a tremendously unique and powerful self buff that gives Nero a strong attack and defense buff on a short cooldown. This allows her to consistently hit above her weight class in most fights. Whereas most other offensive casters are NP damage focused, Nero's standard attack has a lot more oomph thanks to that high uptime buff. The defense buff on the skill is also respectable, and it gives Nero actual tanking capabilities, but even more impressive than that is the class affinity negation effect. This removes Nero's class weaknesses, meaning that she's no longer going to take bonus damage from Riders, Berserkers, or Alter Egos. Surprisingly enough, that isn't Nero's only skill that has both offensive and defensive capabilities. Undying Magus is a targetable buff that grants Guts and a gigantic 50% attack buff to any party member. Targetable Guts is an especially rare and useful ability for support to have but it also comes with essentially a mana burst for any ally or card type, making this one of the most potent support skills in the game. It's also worth noting that the Guts revives an ally with 1 HP. This is especially useful for any allies who deal bonus damage at low HP. Finally, what caster wouldn't be complete without NP charge, and Nero has Rampage Privilege. 
it provides her a whopping 50% NP charge and an additional 50% buff to her NP gain rate when her HP is below half. Given that her NP gain is already great, this skill serves to make her monstrous and capable of NPing multiple times and nearly any time that she wants. All of Nero's skills are ridiculously strong, so skill priority is flexible. If you want to focus on using Nero offensively or as a support, then I suggest leveling 7 crowns for the high uptime buff, followed by Undying Mages for the survivability and additional damage, and then finally Rampage Privilege. But if you are planning to use Nero for most of your farming, then you should level up Rampage Privilege before Undying Mage so that you can NP turn 1 even with CEs like Golden Sumo equipped. Speaking of Noble Phantasms, Nero's Noble Phantasm is an AoE that ignores Evade and Invincibility and also boosts her NP strength before applying damage. Being able to hit through Evade and Invincibility is helpful when considering how many Assassins have Dodge. Additionally, the NP damage buff is pretty strong, so despite being AoE, Nero's NP can hurt. As I mentioned, Nero has excellent NP gain, so it isn't difficult at all to NP multiple times in a battle, and combined with her low cooldown damage buff from 7 crowns, this means Nero is consistently able to apply good damage with high DPS. That is to say, unlike Sanzo or Ilya, who are more burst oriented, Nero's damage doesn't drop off significantly in between Noble Phantasms. Defensively, Nero is also solid. The 30% defense buff is strong, but the ability to ignore class weaknesses means that she can even be used against Berserkers or Riders if you're using her to support an assassin. Her tankiness gives her a lot more versatility in team comps, and Undying Mages is another highly versatile skill. Nero can cast it on herself to make herself even more tanky or powerful, or better yet, you can use it on an ally to make them unkillable. Caster Nero's biggest strength is the high level of flexibility that her kit offers. She makes for an excellent support on any team thanks to Undying Mages being a busted skill. She has strong self buffs so that she can be used offensively, and her insane NP battery makes her one of the best farming servants in her class. She can play nearly any role and do it with a high degree of proficiency. That said, as is the case with most flexible servants, she is a jack of all trades and master of none. Despite her good steady damage, she doesn't hold a candle to more dedicated offensive casters, and while her support skill is great, it's nowhere near as good as dedicated supports like Waver or Merlin. Additionally, her fantastic skills come at a cost. She has uneven and long cooldowns. Seven Crowns may be a short cooldown skill, but Undying Mages will likely only be able to be used once in any given battle. It's harder to find a team that Nero Caster won't fit on than it is to find ones that she does. But for the sake of efficiency, Nero's best team roles are that of support or damage dealer. When being used as a support, she can support a wide range of servants, but Hijikata, Anne and Mary, and Brynhilda have very high synergy with Nero. Both Hijikata and Anne and Mary benefit from reviving with 1 HP thanks to Undying Mages, where they can unleash their most powerful Noble Phantasms. Additionally, Nero Caster can do a good job of providing them crit stars as well. Similarly, Brynn also lacks any form of hard defense, so Guts is tremendously helpful. And she can also bolster Nero's star generating with her Noble Phantasm so that Nero can feed her even more stars. When using Nero offensively, it's better to use her for farming or in battles that have large amounts of enemies in each wave so that you can get the most use out of her NP spamming ability. To that extent, servants who can bolster her NP gain like Helena, Nero Bride, and Ushi are good choices. Helena can be strong in farming teams providing you with a good buster buff for your NP and additional NP gain. Nero Bride's NP gain and attack buff stack very well with her caster form, allowing her to be even more consistent and deadly in longer fights. And Ushi can do something similar, albeit on a much smaller scale, making her a good free-to-play option. Caster Nero's Bond CE is Golden Theater of the Rainbow Sea. It boosts Buster Card effectiveness and NP gain of all allies by 10%. 
a good bond CE that helps Nero's support capabilities while also benefiting herself. If you don't have that, consider using CEs that give her high starting NP charge or arts and buster buffs when farming, something like Halloween Princess, Golden Sumo, or White Cruising. If you're supporting, then star generating CEs are ideal. Stuff like 2030, Seaside Luxury, Maiden Leading Caldia, or Be Elegant. For a bit of future proofing, Nero has multiple options. Offensively, Welcome to Oni Land is strong for turn 1 NP with additional damage and NP gain. While on the support side, Sweet Days grants you damage, NP gain, and generates crit stars. Overall, Nero Caster provides unmatched versatility in the number of roles that she can handle. She works well offensively thanks to her bevy of strong buffs. She has a unique ability to negate class disadvantage, which makes her a solid choice against Berserkers. She has Undying Magus, which alone makes her a good support on nearly any team. And due to her insane NP gain and battery, she's among the most elite farming servants in the game. But for her many upsides, she does have some weaknesses in her very poor stats, uneven and long cooldowns, especially on Undying Magus, and her lack of specialization, which makes her second tier both in terms of offensive capability and support. With that said though, there is no denying her outstanding skill set and versatility, so she gets an A from me. While she may not be the offensive powerhouse that Sanzo or Ilya are, her damage is still very good for an AoE servant. Combined with the fact that her farming capabilities are second only to maybe Nidacris, and the fact that she packs one of the best self buffs and support skills in the game, it's hard to debate that she isn't among the best casters available. And those are my thoughts on Nero Caster. She is definitely a servant you'll be using a lot of and getting a lot of value out of. There's a reason why she appears in so many of my spotlights after all. But as always, let me know what you think in the comments below and if you plan on rolling for her. And leave a like if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over at our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So, Brony out. Later.